Hvala. Dakle, dobro jutro, dragi dame i gospodo. Dobro nam došli na šesti ekonomistov skup o jugoistočnoj Evropi. Do sada smo održavali skupove u Hrvatskoj, Bugarskoj, Rumuniji, prošle godine smo imali jedan i u Beču. Dakle, prvi put u Crnoj gori i prvi put u takozvanom Zapadnom Balkanu. Vidjet ćete na agendi da imamo vrlo intenzivan program i nadam se da ćete se složiti sa mnom da je taj program zanimljiv i izazovan. Ja se zovem Laza Kekić, potičem iz ovih krajeva, ali dugo godina sam već živim i državljanin Velike Britanije. I više od 20 godina sam proveo u Economist grupi. Počet ćemo danas sa diskusijom o prognozama za Balkan, o političkim i ekonomskim prognozama za Balkan i Crnu Goru. I zadovoljstvo mi je da sada pozovem kopredsedavajuće kolege, pro John Hoy, koji je regionalni direktor za Evropu u sestrinskoj organizaciji Economist Intelligence Unit, da sam ja, kao je rekao, isto proveo više od 20 godina, i kolega John Andrews, koji je iskusni dugogodišnji novinar ekonomista, autor i savjetnik za ekonomist. Molim vas. I od sada ćemo preći na zvanični jezik za ovaj skup engleski. Hvala vam. Kosovo. So this uh, rather small region uh, had a very difficult time, as we know, after the 2008 world crisis. Se several of the countries were in recession, but we've had a recovery the last couple of years, 2015-2016. Uh, the average uh, GDP growth in the region was about 3%. And according to our forecasts in the economist group, this will accelerate slightly to about 3.3, uh, 3.4 percent per year in 2017 and 2018. So just to look very quickly, what are the main drivers of this recovery? Well, of course, we've had a bit of a recovery in the Eurozone. That's helped low energy prices, given that all these countries are net importers of energy a favorable base effect, uh, because once you sink so low, the zone is go up. There's been some recovery in exports and uh, investment, uh, some increase in FDI, and uh, despite all the problems of the region and catching up to developed Europe, there are a number of factors which also help it, which have given it a certain resilience uh, to the difficulties of recent years, the large gray economies, the EU anchor, so-called, despite enlargement fatigue and all the problems with the EU that we'll hear about in our subsequent discussions, and there's still a general commitment of the elites to joining the EU. Some increase in FDI, the remittances, of course. I mean, this is a region we have to remember that something like 25% of its population lives outside of the borders of its states. Uh, at the same time, besides the recovery, there's a number of worrying uh, causes of concern, the high debt levels in some of the countries, slow reforms, and fiscal drag, particularly uh, here in Montenegro, and I guess maybe that's well, the point where we um, move to Montenegro. What about the Montenegro economy, uh, Yes, well, Montenegro, uh, like others in this region, the Western Balkan region, had a rather difficult time after the crash in 2008-2009, uh, but has gradually uh, made a recovery and growth has been uh, quite encouraging at around 3%, uh, give or take a few um, uh, 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 points here and there. Last year there was a slowdown in growth in, in Montenegro, 
uh, despite uh, an increase in current spending related to the election, but there was um, a slowdown in construction activity, which um, uh, in particular related to the building of the Bol uh, Bar Boliare motorway from the Adriatic to Serbia, which is due for completion by 2020. We, looking at the outlook for 2017-2018, we expect real GDP growth to average just above 3%, um, uh, with some upside uh, risk there. Uh, the main drivers being tourism, as I mentioned, construction activity. Um, Montenegro has definitely benefited from problems in the Middle East and, and another competitor. Uh, tourism destinations, Turkey and so on. Pre-season bookings by uh, Russian holidaymakers, who are an important co component of the market here, have been quite positive. I suppose there is a question yeah, about the, that will be the sustained. The wine doesn't go to Russia anymore. Sorry? The wine doesn't go to Russia anymore. Um, that's true, but if we look at um, what's been happening with um, exports, there's been certainly a pickup in the first quarter in, in export growth. I think the pickup in activity uh, in Europe and also indeed in the important markets for Montenegro around uh, in Serbia and, and in the uh, Balkan region itself is, uh, is, is quite positive. So we expect. Um, growth of around 3.2% per year over the next few years and private consumption uh, activity has been quite strong. Household incomes will remain relatively robust. I mentioned there was quite an increase in current spending last year related to the election and that's going to feed through. The main problems are that Montenegro has not had a correction of its pretty large fiscal and current account deficits. Um, compared with others in the region who have done so. And it's difficult to address that problem because obviously Montenegro cannot devalue, it has the, the euro. So in terms of addressing that problem, it really has to be done on the, on the fiscal side. Okay. Lazar, um, you've described the, the economic situation of the region. What about the politics of the region? Yes, of course, the politics. You remember the old uh, Clinton phrase in America, it's the economy, stupid. In the Balkans, I guess you'd have to say it's the politics, stupid. It's um, basically a litany of uh, various crises. Uh, just to list, go through them is uh, a bit mind-boggling. At the moment, all attention is uh, rightfully focused on former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, which seems to be imploding and possibly heading for civil war. Bosnia and Herzegovina is ever in a state of semi or imminent crises. Uh, uh, Kosovo Albanian Serb relations at a new low. Serb uh, and Croatian relations very poor. Montenegro stability as well, as we know, because of developments last year called into question. Uh, post Vucic, even Serbia would seem to be the most stable is undergoing a period of turbulence. We've seen an uh, upsurge in rhetoric about Greater Albania and talk of possible new conflict. Pretty much a clampdown on the media everywhere in the region. Perhaps that is the point where we should discuss one of the well, main problems of the whole region. I was going to ask Joe, is this a crisis then for democracy? Um. I think you could definitely say that there are problems of democracy that are manifest in this region. Um, they're not unique to this region by any means because we also see a manifest problem of democracy in uh, uh, wider Europe. But um, when you look at what's happened on the face of it, the political transition in this region appears to have been quite successful. On, they're now uh, all of the countries in the, the region um, have been holding uh, to a greater or lesser extent free and fair elections. In general, civil liberties um, are observed in the region. All of the countries are on the path to EU membership. But democratic culture and democratic practices are proving to be rather shallow and even vulnerable to regression. I mean, Jeremy, um, you are, the, I think, the, the head of the EIU's 
index of democracy list, have you compiled that? Are the, is the region going up or down? Uh, well, in the 2016 Democracy Index, which is this annual measure of democracy that the Economist Intelligence does at the end of, of every year, uh, this region did experience a regression um, uh, in, in, in 2016. Um, there have been problems in the functioning of government. Uh, for the first time, really, um, kind of formal, the formal trappings of democracy, electoral process, um, have been called into question in some countries in the region. Laza mentioned the former Yugoslav Republic of uh, Macedonia. Uh, also, there were some questions asked about the election, the parliamentary election in Serbia in April 2016, where there were some irregularities. There had to be a recount in some um, uh, 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 localities. Um, and even here in Montenegro, in the run-up to the October election, there were claims by the opposition of um, unfair uh, process and irregularities and so on and, and, and of course we had uh, the events on election day here in October 2016 so you could say that um, as in the rest of the region political culture political participation has always been um, a, a problem here um, in general the public is not particularly enamored of political parties and political elites and doesn't get involved in the political process but now perhaps some more serious uh, problems manifesting themselves in relation to the electoral process and functioning of government as well. I think it's the perfect moment then for me to ask um, Zaran Ajin who is a deputy prime minister for the political system uh, to come and give the welcoming remarks. Thank you very much, sir.